Today we're going to take a look at Wikidata, what it is, how it's used to share information around the world through a variety of media and formats, and how you can use it to ensure that information you care about is more accessible to a wider audience. So first, let's consider what is structured data. Wikidata is a, a website that's often de described as using structured data. So let's look at Wikipedia, which might be a bit of a more familiar example. So here's the article about Marie Curie. And this is a very well-developed article on Wikipedia. As you can see, it's, uh, it has the good article status, which indicates that it's been through uh, some peer review. Um, and if we scroll through it, we're going to find that it has lots of links. It has a very extensive introduction, many sections, lots of information in the info box, etc., etc. So let's look at this in terms of its structure. So the first thing uh, to note is the title of the article. Uh, the title of the article is, uh, is chosen to most clearly communicate what the article is about. And that name is something that's used in many uh, books, articles, databases, etc. around the world. So if you want to find information about this person, their name is a natural thing to search on and it will lead you to exactly what you're looking for on Wikipedia. Um, also, if we look on the right hand side, this is what we call an info box. And this gives you information that's structured according to what kind of information it is. So the place where she was born is in a section called born. Uh, the place and date where she died, same thing. Uh, her citizenship is listed as such, etc. And uh, of course, the structure of the article itself is significant. Uh, we have this table of contents where you can, if you're interested in her personal life, you might find one section that you're interested in going to. If you're interested in what she won a Nobel Prize for, you can jump right to it because it's structured in a, data, in a table of contents. Uh, and then also on the left hand side, there is even more structure here in terms of linking this article to other websites. So Wikipedia, as you probably know, exists in many, many different languages. And for a, a popular topic like this, many, many language editions of Wikipedia will have their own article about Marie Curie. So you could go straight to the French version or the Italian version or the Russian version. Um, just by clicking here. Uh, also, Wikimedia Commons, which is a media repository connected with Wikipedia, has uh, a number of photos and uh, perhaps videos about uh, about this person or um, you know various kinds of media. So you, again, you could jump right to it. Wikiquote, Wikisource, these are other websites connected with Wikipedia that are going to have further information about her. So the uh, the structure of Wikipedia, of course, is designed almost entirely with the idea of being useful to a human reader, to someone like you who wants to find information about this person. Uh, and that's great. Wikidata also aims to serve a human reader, but in addition to that, it aims to serve uh, computer programs. So it should be searchable and readable by humans and by computer programs. And those computer programs, which might be anything from a web search engine to a graphics program that looks to present the data in uh, new and interesting ways, uh, or it might be a dynamic website that pulls information actively from, uh, from Wikidata. Um, and those websites may also intend to serve a human reader but Wikidata allows them to do it in their own way. It sort of, it sort of gives uh, the creators of computer programs further flexibility in accessing information and presenting it in new and interesting ways. So let's take a look at a few specific examples of how Wikidata can be useful. Uh, I think first, let's take a look at the Wikidata item for Marie Curie, uh, just to get a sense of what it contains and to see that it is in fact uh, comprehensible to uh, to an ordinary human. So of course you see uh, her name at the top, 
But next to it, you see this, this is known as a Q number, Q7186. This is the unique identifier that Wikidata uses because Wikidata is one site that serves all languages, many, many languages. So since we're looking at this uh, from a web browser that has English as our language, uh, it knows to show us the English name. But if we were in China or Thailand or Africa and had our web browser set to our native language, we would be seeing a name maybe in a script, you know, a non-Latin script uh, displayed here because that title is not actually the unique identifier that defines this, the, the Q number is. Uh, again, because we're in English, we see the English description immediately below, and then we see a number of other names or variants on her name that she's known by. Uh, if we want to see more languages, I just collapsed that uh, a little prematurely, but you can see here a few common languages are listed at the top. You can click all entered languages and see even more, more information, and you can see that we have labels in different scripts, so this is what would display as the title uh, and descriptions as well as, as, well as uh, alternate names. If we scroll down a little bit, we're going to have a number of statements. So this is really the core of what Wikidata is. It, it takes factual statements that might or might not appear in the Wikipedia article and puts them in a more structured format. So this item is an instance of a human. This is an, this is an item about a person. So on the left here, these are, these are things that are known as P numbers. So P numbers and Q numbers are kind of the core of how Wikidata works. So a P is a property and a, a Q is the value that's attached to that property. So it's an in, this is an instance of a human. We can see that there's a reference for this and it tells us that it's pulled it from BNF authorities, whatever that is. Uh, we could click on it presumably to learn more about it. Um, we can see that uh, this is part of Pierre and Marie Curie. Um, so this is, uh, I guess, uh, the couple is an item also entered in Wikidata. That may not be the most obvious example, so I'm going to skip past that. We see that there are a couple of images attached to it, and so this makes these images prominent and readily available uh, to any program that might be querying this database. It tells us that this is a woman, uh, what countries she was a citizen of, her birth name, which you notice is different from the name that we know her by. Uh, it breaks down her name into a given name and, and married name, etc. Place of birth. So this links, each one of these is going to be its own Wikidata item. So she was born in Warsaw. If we wanted to click on Warsaw, we could see an entire Wikidata item about that city. Um, and so I'm going to scroll past these statements, I think you get the idea uh, of what they're about, but there's a special kind of statements as well. If we scroll far enough down, we will see a section called identifiers. And there we go. And so these are also statements, but they're a special kind of statements. Uh, these are links to other databases, to the, the entry for this person on other databases. So VIAF is a database system used by libraries and if, if we click on this number we're going to see her entry in that database and that's true of everything in this section every one of these so the national library of brazil has an entry for her the national library of chile has an entry for her etc cetera, etc cetera. and so these are again it's it, it still is a, a factual statement just like the other ones but they're kept separate because there are ways to link this with information in other online databases. And then finally, if we scroll far enough down, we're going to find that actually the, those, those language editions of Wikipedia that I was showing you earlier, uh, and those other wiki websites like Wikimedia Commons, etc., all of, all of that information is connected to the English Wikipedia article because they are connected on Wikidata. Wikidata serves as sort of the glue that hold, holds all of these different wiki sites together. So in this section under Wikipedia, each one of these is a different language edition of Wikipedia. And so uh, let's say we wrote, uh, let's say that the, the Spanish language Wikipedia did not have an article about her. I have to scroll a long way down. She's a, a popular woman. Um, 
if I wanted to uh, to enter something that's not there yet, I would. Uh, why am I not seeing this? Uh, for some reason, I'm not seeing the entry where I would add it. Maybe because she already <laughs> exists in every Wikipedia. I'm not sure. Uh, or maybe I'm not logged in. I think somehow my login broke here. So I, I will skip past that. But you can see the, the, the fact that she's attached to these different databases. This is what allows that to be displayed in the left-hand column. So uh, now let's take a look at one. This is going to be the Library of Congress entry. So this is one of those databases in the identifiers section. And this will give you an idea of how another online database would display similar kinds of information. So again, you see uh, specific entries about her name, variants of her name, additional information. And uh, an interesting one here is if you scroll down, you'll find under sources, it tells you some of the, the sources that the researchers at the Library of Congress found uh, that would give you more information about her. So that can be a really useful thing if you're looking to do deeper research uh, in addition to what you might find on Wikipedia. So let's look at how all of this serves different kinds of programs. First, let's look at a, uh, a web search engine. So here I have done a search in DuckDuckGo, and this would be very similar on uh, Google or Bing or any search engine. I searched on her name. On the right-hand side, you see that there is an info box, very similar to what we saw on Wikipedia. Um, it tells us where she was born. It gives us structured data. It tells us where she died, her citizenship. If we click this down arrow, we're going to get a whole lot more here. Now, all of this information, I believe, as of now, as of 2021, this is generally pulled from the info box on Wikipedia. Um, and some of it is pulled from other sources on the web. You see there's a link to the IMDB page about her. I don't think that's pulled from Wikipedia. I think that's because they are also attaching IMDB entries to specific topics. Uh, but in the future, Wikidata aims to be and is is almost certainly going to be the main place that web search engines are pulling information like this for their own info boxes. So by adding to the Wikidata entry, you can actually influence what shows up prominently in search engines. Uh, if not today, then, uh, then in the future as they migrate from using Wikipedia's info boxes to using Wikidata. Okay, so let's look at another presentation uh, of, of this. This is, this is uh, a tool called Scolia. So you can see the URL in the bar here, scolia.toolforge.org. So this is definitely one you might enjoy playing with yourself uh, with a topic that you're interested in. This is a tool that displays the information contained in Wikidata in, uh, in a variety of different ways. So it gives you an excerpt from the Wikipedia article to give you some information about who she is. Then as we scroll down, uh, this first section is a list of her publications. So each of these is going to link to a Wikidata item. It tells us how many pages they are if that's entered, uh, what the venue, what the, the publication it appeared in is, and who the authors are uh, in addition to her, the, who are the co-authors. And then if we scroll down, this is the number of publications per year. So she had one publication in 1907 and 1910. She had two publications in 1921 and another one in 1931. Now, of course, this can only display what is known to Wikidata. So if she had actually 15 publications, but Wikidata only has entries for five of them, we're only going to see those five. So always keep that in mind when you're looking at any query from Wikidata. Um, in addition, this shows us the ones where she's the first author of several versus where she's the solo author by a color code. Uh, now, if we look at number of pages for year, per year, we see that the, the majority of the work represented in these was actually in the publications that came out in 1921. There were 150 or so pages uh, in those two works, and actually most of them in, in one of those works. Uh, and we can see which one they are, again, by color code. And we'll notice there was a 1911 entry before uh, in the in the chart above, there's nothing displayed here. Is that because that was a zero-page article? 
No, probably not. It's that, as it tells us here, only articles with page numbers entered are displayed. So in that Wikidata entry, it presumably does not list how many pages that article was. Let's look at the next one. We can see the different topics that she published on uh, and how much she published on each of them. Uh, and I'm gonna, I wanna get down to, uh, there's some interesting stuff further down. I'm not sure far, how far I have to go. Co-author graph, this is what I'm looking for. Um, so here we see a, a nice messy chart of, uh, of the various people who were her co-authors. But then if we click on, this is actually a dynamic item. So I'm going to click on Otto Hahn, and it will do this nice little animation. Eventually, this will settle down. And it shows us all the different things that Otto Hahn, it, 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 it shows a lot of different items from his Wikidata entries, such as his first name and his last name, uh, his gender, uh, his nationality. Uh, and so you can click on any of these items and you can actually browse around the Wikidata information in a different way than the sort of static format that we were looking at before. Uh, and then we go a little further, we can see the co-author map. This shows where the various people that she collaborated with uh, were from. And if you click on any of these points, it tells you exactly uh, what institution they represented. So the French Academy of Sciences, uh, this is someone from the Spanish Royal Academy of Sciences. So this really, you know, this this gives you kind of a view of the uh, the many different possibilities that something like Wikidata opens up. So with that, let's um, let's. Oh, I did want to show you another. Um, uh, this is this is another map. So we've seen a map. This is. I just wanted to show you something a very, from a very different kind of topic area. This is a map of all the newspapers in Washington, in the U.S. state of Washington. And again, if you click on any one of these items, it's going to give you further information. So this one tells you, uh, it gives you a link for the place and for the publication. So Chelan is the name of the town, and the Lake Chelan Mirror is the name of the newspaper. And those are going to link to the Wikidata items. Now the red dots indicate in this particular view that there is no Wikipedia article associated with this publication. The green dots and the yellow dots will have a Wikipedia article. So let's, uh, let's click on this one here. So the Wenatchee world, you see now there's an additional link that's going to take you to the Wikipedia article. And then also if there's more than one newspaper in a city, it's going to have, you probably can't tell, but it's a, it's a ever so slightly smaller dot here on Ellensburg. Uh, that indicates that there's more than one. And so here you see there's actually uh, one newspaper that has no uh, no Wikipedia article and another one that does have a Wikipedia article. So uh, so this, this is another way to make use of the data in, in Wikidata. Um, I'm going to also show you, like once you're in this view of the map, you can actually view this same data as a table. So... If I click that, it's going to just show us a chart with um, uh, with with each of these items. So each one of these represents a dot on the map, and it just gives us the the text information. So we can view it in a number of different ways, and there are other choices, of course, as well over here. So let's take a look uh, at how, let's. I, I want to give you a sense of kind of how a Wikidata entity gets built. So here is a much simpler one for a lesser known doctor. Uh, Bithynia Angelina Owens Adair was one of the first doctors in the US state of Oregon. And I can scroll through this entire entry pretty quickly. There's not nearly as much as there was for Marie Curie a moment ago. But you see it's the same general structure. Uh, under languages, uh, there's only a couple that are entered for her. Uh, but still, this is an instance of a human. We also have an image here, gender, country of citizenship. Uh, and so in this case, you could you can kind of imagine we might be able to find some information and add to it. So if we wanted to add a statement here, we would just click on add statement and it would actually suggest the things that it thinks are the most likely ones that we want to add. So it kind of looks at what sort of entity this is 
and um, and suggests what we might want to enter. So we could enter we could enter these or we can type in here and uh, and find other entities. So I'm going to come back to this in a moment to get into the specifics. Um, I want to I want to go to yet another example uh, to do that. But first, I wanted to show you one thing. When I searched on Bethenia Owens Adair, there were actually two things that came up. So just when I put it in the search box, and the other one was this here. So take a look at this. It's uh, this is a different kind of title, and it tells us this is an encyclopedia article. So this is not an item about the person. This is about an article about a person. And if we scroll down, this has even less information. It's an instance of an encyclopedic article. It tells us what the title of it is and who the author is, or uh, the, the name of the author, and that it was published in 2018. And it has one identifier. Uh, this, if we click it, is going to take us to the actual article. And that's all we know about it. So there's one, there, there's, there's a, a whole lot of information that's not here, but there's one very vital piece of information, which is that the primary topic of this article is Bithynia Owens Adair. So there is not a structural link between this Wikidata item and, uh, let's see, this uh, Wikidata item, which is about the person. So if we wanted to add that, and I'm not going to do it now, but I'll just give you a general idea, we would go under statements, add a statement, and you would just type what you think it might be. So let's say main topic. And so it, it, it guesses what we want, and so it calls it main subject or primary topic. But this is the same. This is what we're looking for. So we would click on that, and then we would type her name, and it would pre-populate there. Click on that, and then we would click publish. And now there would be a link, at least in one direction, from the article to the person. There wouldn't be a link from the person to the article, but there's probably a way to do that as well. OK, so here's yet another one. This is Max Binheim. Max Binheim was the editor of a 1928 book called Women of the West. Uh, that was a biography of many, many women. This is someone I've done a little bit of research on, and I haven't been able to find a tremendous amount of information about him. So um, so this is a case where I would have trouble starting a Wikipedia article that meets Wikipedia's threshold of notability. So Wikipedia only permits uh, entries for uh, items that have uh, a good amount of verifiable information that are, that are mentioned in uh, in several sources. Um, and so in this case, I could find sort of sporadic information about him in various places, but I never found anything with like a date of birth or where he was from or what his family, you know, who like uh, who he was related to, anything like that. I did find that he was the editor of a number of German language newspapers across the United States. And so let's say I was thinking about trying to write a Wikipedia article someday, but it's still kind of a long way off before I find enough source material to be able to do that. But I want to park some information in the meantime, and I want it to be useful. What I would do is um, I would try to attach some of the references that I find, especially if they're public URLs on the internet, to claims in here. So one thing I found is that he was the editor of the California Zeitung which was a German language newspaper in San Francisco. And so I entered that here, and then I entered a reference as well. So under references, if you click add a reference, you, can, you would type reference URL, and then this will allow you to just paste in the URL. So in this case, this is something I had to do a, a kind of specialized search. I just didn't find it on a... a a DuckDuckGo or Google search, I had to know where the archives for editor and publisher were and uh, and dig into that. So it's useful to keep this so it, it doesn't take me or anyone else uh, as much trouble to find it in the future. So that's why I entered it here. So I'm, I'm not going to do it again because that would be redundant. I'm just going to cancel out of what I was doing. Um, now I will observe that the um, we have this exclamation mark and it turns out that what I did here is actually not quite correct. And I, I left this mistake in just to demonstrate uh, 
Wikidata is a learning process for me, just, uh, just like it is for you. Um, it's an incredibly complex site. And so one of the things that I will run across frequently is that I, my instinct about how to use it isn't quite right in some cases. And this is, a, this is an illustration of that. In this case, what it's telling me is that uh, this property, editor, it's actually meant to go in the other direction. Uh, this is supposed to be on the entry for California, California Zeitung, and it would list who is the editor, as opposed to being on the page for the editor and list, listing what is the publication. So, um, you know, so the way to correct this would be probably to remove it here, or maybe there's a different property that's reciprocal that goes in the other direction where I could enter this information. Uh, so that that might be something different you know, it might be um, editor of or something like that might be the name of the property. And then also I could go to the California Zeitung and make sure that his name is entered as the editor. Okay, um, so we're going, the next thing, the last thing we're gonna do is look at how to create a new Wikidata item. And so to do that, Let's take a look at Max's work. Uh, this is a, a page from uh, from the Women of the West book. And so here we have an entry for Clara Wilhelmina Waffle, who was a child specialist doctor uh, on the, the in the Western United States. So again, this is an example where unless we were to find other sources, we probably don't have enough to start a Wikipedia article, but we do have enough to start a Wikidata item. So I'm going to copy this text. Uh, and and I'll, I'll note that in this particular instance, I happen to know that this book is in the public domain. So I'm not worried about pasting this into, uh, into Wikipedia and, and having a copyright violation uh, or Wikidata because it's not under copyright. Um, so you can't you can't do this particular approach uh, with just anything that you find. Uh, but just for convenience to demonstrate this, I'm going to copy that text. Uh, and then I have clicked on create a new item here on Wikidata. Actually, I've done this after I first I did a search to see if Clara Waffle, I searched on a couple of different variants of her name to make sure that there isn't already an entry here and there's not. And so I clicked on create a new item. I put in her her name under label. So this is how it's going to appear as the primary title of the page in English. And then there are the aliases below. So I put a couple of variants. I put just Clara Waffle without her middle name. And then it says pipe separated. So it wants different possibilities to be separated by a vertical pipe. So you type that. And then I put Dr. Waffle as another one. And we'll see how that displays in a moment. And I'm going to, this is the part where I'm going to just take a bit of a shortcut. I'm going to paste that entire uh, entry, which was not a terribly long entry in here. I don't think that's too long for this field under the description. I'm not going to leave it there, but I'm going to use it as I build it. So take a look at this. I'm going to cre click create. And okay, it is telling me that the description uh, can't be more than 250 characters. So I'm going to go, I'm going to just sort of guess where that is. Uh, here, I'm going to go this far and delete some. And I'll click Create again. Oh, and look, I have been uh, flagged as, a, uh, as potentially a spam bot. So um, it's telling me here that repeated unconstructive editing will result in your account or IP address being blocked. Uh, if you believe it to be constructed, you may submit it again to confirm it. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Uh, this is, I guess, confirming that, uh, that this is maybe not the best approach, uh, but you'll see why I'm doing it for, the, for demonstration purposes here. Uh, it's because I want to have just all in one screen. I want to be able to take some of these items in the description and turn them into statements. So you can see this, this top section should look somewhat familiar. Okay. And now it tells me that she was born in San Francisco. So I'm going to, I'm going to add a statement. First, I'm going to say this is an instance. So I click on add statement and it suggests what it thinks I want. So this is an instance of a human. We've seen that before. Oops. Okay. And I'll publish. And next I'm going to, so we can continue with that, uh, 
add a statement and just follow what it wants us to do. Um, I'm not sure why this keeps jumping my screen. I just bring the size down a little so I can see everything. Okay, so now if I click on add a statement, I, I'm going to skip sex or gender. I assume this is probably a woman, but I don't, I would probably want to be certain before I enter that. Um, occupation, I know, is a doctor. Okay, so it says physician or doctor. And I'll just click publish. And I do want to put in this born in San Francisco. I'm going to go back to where I copied this from and I'm going to copy the URL because I'm also going to add my source for this. Okay, so uh, let's see. So I will add a statement and we will say place of birth and I'm gonna say San Francisco okay consolidated city Con county in California so that's the right San Francisco click on that and I want to add a reference so here I'm gonna type reference URL and I'm gonna paste what I just had. And that's sort of the equivalent of adding a footnote on Wikipedia. And now I click publish up here and it will publish that whole thing. So you can see how this starts to get built. Now the final thing I'll point out is that this, uh, just having built this much, it's a reasonable guess that other either people or scripts will come along in the not too distant future and continue building out this entry. So uh, there, are, there are bots and scripts that will add basic descriptions uh, for different land labels for different languages uh, that will likely come through. And, uh, and also they will link it to other databases. And as an example of this, I'm going to go back to our example of Max Binheim that we were looking at before. So I created this item uh, just a couple months ago, I believe in January. But I didn't put any of these links to identifiers in other databases. I count one, two, three, four, five, five, yeah, five different databases it's been linked to. All of that was done by someone else. So there are people who are kind of uh, doing various things by manual or automated processes to find links to other databases. And then once there's a link to another database, the information from that database becomes that much more accessible. and. Uh, people will start to add more statements to the item itself as well. Uh, one final thing before I wrap up, I did point out that description I put is really not a proper description at all. Uh, I was just pasting it there as, as sort of a stepping stone to add statements. So I do want to go back in and, uh, and clean that up a little bit. Um, I was adjusting the size here because for some reason it was giving me scrolling difficulties back to something a little more legible. So I'm going to uh, click this general uh, edit button up here to, uh, to edit the description. This will look familiar by now. So at the beginning here, this is just what it had at the beginning of the encyclopedia entry. Um, so we don't need that, right? That's redundant of the name that we have above and the statements that we have below. Child specialist, well, that's uh, that's not really uh, sort of the right way to begin something like this. What we want to say that here is probably that she was a doctor. And I'm going to say from the west coast of the United States. Uh, I, I'm not going to say from San Francisco because I'm not really sure uh, without reading that more closely if her career was in San Francisco or if that's just where she was born and then she became famous somewhere else. So, But because she's in the Women of the West book, I'm sure that it is uh, in the Western United States. So let's just uh, and then I'm going to just delete everything else out of there. Uh, we can go back to that source to add statements, but I don't want to leave something that's kind of messy and out of sync with how Wikidata is supposed to be. So I'll just click delete and publish. 
So there we have a new Wikidata entry that can grow over time. So I hope this has been a useful introduction. Obviously, there is, uh, is much, much more depth to Wikidata, but this should give you a general sense of, uh, of how it's structured and how to start building entries.